Hey guys, it's Classic G Body. So this is the video following up to the teaser video of the 78 Cutlass that you saw being flatbedded to my house and unloaded in my driveway. Let me back up and show you exactly what it is. So it is a 78 Cutlass and it is not a project vehicle like I need another one of those. But I do want to tell you the story behind this car. Uh, the story starts uh, dates back to 1996 and in 96, 97 and 98 I worked at a Ford dealership and during my time there I actually worked on this car it was kinda odd because working at a Ford dealership and then also seeing a 78 Cutlass pull in for some service was kinda strange but uh, the owner of this car did know the service writer uh, the service writer that I worked with at the time and uh, uh, the guy trusted the technicians that worked there, trusted the service writer. So uh, I, requ I requested to work on this car just because I knew G bodies, and uh, at that time I had uh, my 80 Cutlass, uh, a second 80 Cutlass, and, a, and uh, an 81 Malibu. So I did the oil changes on this car and uh, did the brake inspections and routine maintenance, and uh, so it was cool working on it. So I knew the car a little bit, you know, knew knew uh, knew about it. Uh, it looked a lot better than it does now, you know, back then. So I quit the dealership in '98, and and of course I never see the car again. Up until about 2008, when I was browsing Craigslist, my typical uh, browsing of car parts and you know just seeing what's out there because you never know what you can find, and uh, saw this car for sale listed for 1,800 bucks. Now, I knew it was the same car. I immediately recognized it because how many 78 Cutlasses, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in Ohio, northern Ohio, that would have the Cutlass decal on the door, white, blue bucket seats, wood grain steering wheel, of course, the pool ball shifter handle, and the solid aluminum American racing wheels. So, I knew it was the same car. And, of course, you know, the... Uh, couple other details which I will tell you about in a minute here I ended up calling the guy uh, just to get the story behind it just because I knew the car and, and I was just shocked to see it again uh, the guy said that he bought the car in uh, in the late 90s and the car did not run currently because it had been sitting for for uh, almost uh, 10 years at the time so I told him, you know, if if uh, if I was if I were to buy the car, I would want to hear it run. So he was going to get the car running, but he never did. He just kept listening to the car, listening to the car. Years go by. Each time he lists the car, he starts listing it as a parts car. He'll sell parts. He, he started listing the bumper, the header panel, the wheels, miscellaneous parts on this car. And every time he would list the car, he would drop the price from eighteen hundred to fifteen hundred to twelve hundred. Uh, the car that was back then that went through to 2008, 2009, 2010, and then I stopped seeing the car. So I figured, okay, well, someone must have bought it and, and didn't think much of it anymore. And let me show you the interior. And, uh, and now 2011, September 2011, I end up seeing this car again. And the car is listed for 800 bucks. The ad said 78 Cutlass. Severely rusted, has been sitting for 10 years. So I called the guy. I didn't mention to him that I'd spoken to him about three years prior, and I also didn't mention to him that I knew of the car's history. So I asked him if he can get the car running. I'd want to hear it run. And uh, he said that he had it running three years prior, which maybe he did. Uh, but I but I never got in contact with him. So he ends up getting the car running, uh, pulls the fuel line off the off the uh, off the fuel pump and runs it into a, a gas can because who knows what's in the gas tank anymore. And and he fires it up, runs great. He calls me up. He said, "Hey, I got it. I got it running. Come check it out." And uh, it ran it ran great. So I end up making a deal with him. And uh, and he goes ahead and brings it to my house. So here it sits, and 
and I had mentioned that I worked on this car back in 96, 97, and 98 doing some oil changes. And of course, as you guys know, Ford uses Motorcraft parts. They, of course, use Motorcraft oil filters. And uh, I put Motorcraft oil filter and Oilcraft oh, and a Motorcraft oil filter on this car. And I peeked underneath this car, and hopefully you guys can see this. It still has a Motorcraft oil filter on it, which which I couldn't believe. So, needless to say, I may have been the last person to change the oil on this car. And the reason why I say that is because uh, the guy I bought it from bought it in the late 90s. The guy, uh, the last time I serviced this car was about 98. The owner of the car at that time ended up dying in 99 of cancer. The guy who I bought this car from bought this car in 99. And when he bought it, he just he he uh, he drove it. Uh, he said he only drove it for about two weeks. He said a, the ball joint broke, went into the fender, and uh, he fixed the ball joint. And then his brother ended up buying the car from him. And then he and then they just let it sit. And then and they let it sit underneath a tree uh, on grass. And it just sat there for about ten years or so. And uh, so that goes to show you what happens to a, a nice car uh, and it ends up getting to the wrong hands. So, so it's just ironic that I worked on this car back in the mid-90s, did the oil changes on it, and uh, the owner died, the wife sold the car in 99, the people who bought it in 99 let the car sit, and now I have it. And it still has a Motorcraft oil filter on it. So I was probably the last person to change the oil on this car. So this car is just in, in poor, poor shape. So it's a shame. But now it's going to serve as a parts car for myself. So what I showed in the teaser video was me lifting up the hood. And I stopped the video right there. So I want to show you guys what's under the hood and the entire reason why I bought this car. Ugh. All right, well there it is. Oldsmobile 403 is sitting here under the hood. And uh, an Olds 403 is the biggest small block that Oldsmobile made, similar to the uh, Chevy 400, because that was Chevy's uh, smallest, or largest small block. So this is an Olds, an Olds 403 and uh, back in the mid 90's when I worked on this car speaking with the guy uh, who owned it this engine was brand new then freshly rebuilt with a fresh turbo 350 transmission Let me pull the air cleaner off of it and show you what it looks like so uh, this is the whole re reason why I bought it because I, uh, I knew what the car had in it and uh, knew the history behind it I knew the engine was fresh I knew the transmission was fresh at least back then, but you know, knowing what I know now, the car sat over the past 10 years, so I know this car didn't get driven much at all. So, and it shows, uh, you know, if you check out the intake manifold, of course, the the paint's peeling off of it, but there isn't any any sign of a lot of a lot of miles. There's any dirt sitting down there. There's any grease build up, and uh, and the engine runs. So. I'm, I'm excited. So what this engine's going to uh, uh, serve for me is I'm going to pull the driveline out of this car and put it in my black 79 Calais, uh, which is in one of my other videos. So if you want to see the car, go ahead and check out that video. So I'm excited. So this car is going to get parted out. I'll use the driveline. I may even use a steering wheel. But I'm going to uh, sell all the parts I can off this car, and then it's going to... It's going to get scrapped. This car is in, in too bad a shape to, to even think about fixing up. The, as I showed, you know, the roof is, the roof is gone all across, all across the windshield. You know, the fenders, the fenders bent in. The core support's rotted. The hood, the hood's gone. You know, it's a shame. You know, that, that, that this car was nice back in the mid 90s and, and the, uh, the original owner builds this car and, and dies 
the wife sells it and it gets into the wrong hands and the people who buy it just let it sit and go to hell. And uh, I mean, it has moss growing all over it. The quarters are, are, are bubbling. The, the chrome molding, I mean, it's just crumbling. The chrome molding is just peeling off of it. And, uh, you know, the, the trunk pan, the trunk pan's rotted out on it. So, it's too bad, but it's going to serve as a parts car for me. So, that's the story behind this car, and what I want to do is, is fire this thing up and and uh, see if it moves, because I heard the engine run, but I have no idea if it even moves. So, I'll do that next, and uh, so go ahead and keep up with my videos. Go ahead and post comments. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, so... I'm going to fire this thing up and, and see if it moves. I'll go ahead and take a video of that uh, as well. So that's it. A car that I had a lot of history with. Not a lot of history, but a car that I had a little bit of history with, but, but knew about it. And, uh, and here it sits all those years later.